Firstly, thanks very much for inviting us to speak at the Learning Network today. We're to, delighted to be here to talk a bit about uh, the Workforce Planning Toolkit, which has been developed by the um, voluntary sector. Social Services Workforce Unit. Um, as some of you may already know, the, uh, the Workforce Unit was set up about two years ago um, to support and promote the development of the voluntary sector social services workforce in Scotland. Um, and just to, to give you a very brief background to the toolkit, um, about a year and a half ago, we um, asked members of our workforce development network what they thought the, the kind of key wish list for support from the um, workforce unit would be. And top of the list uh, was information and guidance on workforce planning. Because members thought that workforce planning was something we, we kind of all know we ought to be doing. We're not 100% sure what it is. Um, and so our stakeholders thought that it would be useful to have some kind of a toolkit um, to help people get started and give people a few ideas of um, how to start the process and, and put it into action within um, organisations. So we put together um, a small working group with stakeholders from the voluntary sector, but also with representatives from um, local authorities, the SSSC and the Scottish Executive to develop um, a toolkit. And there's a copy of the toolkit is in your delegate packs today. So, and although it was developed with the voluntary sector in mind, um, we hope it, it would be a useful tool guide for pretty whatever organisation you're from. So today's presentation, uh, we're going to do a quick background to the toolkit, which I've already done. Um, we're going to look at why we need to develop a workforce plan, and then have a quick look at getting started, whose job is workforce planning and how, do we, how, how can we coordinate this within organisations. And then we'll give you a brief outline of some of the tools that are involved in the, tool, in, in the toolkit. And we hope that, although we know that the toolkit doesn't provide every answer, it does provide some tools and techniques that hopefully you can take away and adapt for your own purposes within your organisation. So Jan, over to you, what is workforce planning? Yes, I feel as though I'm just pulling threads together in, in these first two slides because we have started off in our toolkit very generally um, in terms of what is workforce planning in general. And then we have contextualised that for the voluntary sector. So I'm doing the general bit, which is really pulling together what all the speakers, I think, have been saying. Workforce planning is, for all of us, about getting the right people in the right place at the right time, with the right skills. I got that in the wrong order, but, but that is essentially what we're all doing. Um, and when we started this whole process, we got lots and lots of documents together about workforce planning, the employers' organisation, the national health service plans, uh, the, the social service national strategy, and they all start off with this. And we thought we were original um, in the social services with this wonderful sentence that actually occurs all over the place. Um, and this is really what we're all talking about. The actual process of workforce planning, too, is not something mystical and different from any other sort of planning. It's the same process as strategic planning and indeed needs to tie in with strategic planning. So it is about finding out where we are now, where we want to be, and how we're going to get there. It is the same journey, and it must tie in with the rest of the journey that we're doing as organisations. In the voluntary sector, we're very conscious that it's not just our journey either, because we are commissioned services most of the time. And therefore, we're commissioned from local authorities, we're commissioned from the health service also. So we have to be very aware of what's going on in terms of strategic planning and workforce planning in local authorities and in the health service. It's not just us. We are in a very big context. And Caroline is going to say a little bit more about the process now. Oh no, I've got another one to do. I've forgotten about this one. <laughs> this again is really pulling together what we've all been saying this morning. Why workforce plan? Workforce planning is a very exciting process because it does make organisations better. It improves the way organisations work. 
it improves the way they use resources, um, it achieves regulatory requirements or helps to achieve regulatory requirements, it, it identifies and responds to skill gaps. And like some other people here, we, we have been around quite a few voluntary organisations in the process um, of our two-year development, some of it being around developing a core minimum data set, which we'll also mention later on. But many organisations didn't know what their staff was, let alone what the skill gaps were. And, and this whole process of planning does get us to look at at who we are and what we've got. Um, it helps for planning and uh, learning and development. It certainly improves our recruitment and retention rates. Ultimately, what Wendy was saying at the very beginning is if all this is about service users and carers and improving our service delivery, and this is an essential part of improving our service delivery. And it does make us look at the environment, the external policy environment and the whole external environment and internal environment and get us to respond better to what those are. It's very interesting when we started developing the workforce planning toolkit, we had a lot of debate in the group about whose job workforce planning actually was. And when we started out, um, it was really, it was, it was quite fascinating. We had huge debates because, for example, all the training people in our group thought, "Well, don't panic. It's a training, it's a training job. We can put together a training plan. It'll be great. That's cool." All the HR people thought, "Well, no, workforce planning is actually my job. We can, I can do an HR plan, pop that together, sort it. No problem." Then, when we actually look, looked at the process as a whole, we realised that. To, to plan successfully, workforce planning takes a lot of input from a lot of different people within your organisation. And one of the big challenges is coordinating it and pulling in the ideas and experiences and expertise from everybody within your organisation. And on the slide there, we've just got some examples of people that you might want to in, involve in your workforce planning. It's not an exhaustive list by any, any sense of imagination. It's just a start, but for example, we've got volunteers, employees, managers, learning and development team, your management committee, service users and carers, chief executive. And that's just really to give an idea that workforce planning does need to, to pull in everybody's ideas and experiences. There's no one person in an organisation who can have, you know, absolutely everything that you need to workforce plan. You need to pull it together and coordinating that is, it clearly can be a bit of a challenge. So one of the, the ideas that we suggest in our workforce planning toolkit is looking at ways that you can coordinate that, perhaps by setting up a, a steering group, having a project lead, to pull together the ideas of, of the, all the people who can help you with your planning. And as we developed the toolkit and started talking to people who are, who are already involved and, and starting workforce planning in their own organisations, We've heard lots of really creative ideas about how you can pull people together. So for example, um, one organisation we know was breaking down workforce planning into more bite-sized chunks and putting together little change groups within the organisation so that people can contribute their ideas and then see exactly how their ideas and contributions can make a practical difference to their jobs and to their organisation. That's just one idea. Obviously, it depends a lot on your organisation and uh, what, what suits you 